drop, 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 drop. I drop your ass on your ass. Drop, 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 drop. Welcome back to the Jocelyn's Cabaret After Show, only on Damien After Dark. I'm glad to see you here. Thank you for joining. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and get subscribed to the channel by clicking the subscribe button below this video and also turn on your post notifications so you never miss a beat, okay? Next, click the thumbs up button below this video as well to like the video. I would appreciate that so much. That gets me in the algorithm and I would appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. You can also support by donating to the channel. In the description box below will be ways that you can donate using Cash App, PayPal, Zelle. I will also put my Amazon wish list there as well for those that want to be generous. Last but not least, join the conversation. I want to hear from you on what you thought of tonight's episode, okay? I'll tell you what I thought. Tonight's episode was a little bit of a snooze. I'm not going to lie. Listen, there was... There was too much of the precious and the holiday story going on and not enough of the Jocelyn arrest drama of it all going on. Because we know we're watching in real time on the show Jocelyn getting arrested. She, you know, she she beat up Big Lex. She put her hands on ballistic. She, she put her hands on police officers. And we could be exploring and seeing the aftermath of all that. We could see how natural, ballistic, all of them are handling this. But instead, they give us the entire episode of Holiday and Precious and their drama that they're having between whether or not they're going to fuck each other or whatever the hell the case may be. But anyway, we're going to get into it all. If you care, we're going to get into it. Yes, this episode was a little slow. Yes, this episode was a little bit like, uh, but... But next week, things heat back up and it's going to get good. This was a filler episode, but I promise you, it's going to get good. Okay. So picking up from where we left off from last week, Jocelyn is, you know, she's yelling at the police. She's telling them, don't fucking touch me. Don't touch me, white man. Don't you fucking touch me. Ballistic is trying to hold her back. Now, if you notice, once Ballistic... He, he's trying to get Jocelyn away from these police officers, defuse the situation. He doesn't want her to go to jail. So he gets her in the dressing room, right? Now, all of a sudden, the dressing room door swings open, and we see Jocelyn, like, she's punching ballistic. Bah, bah, bah. Punching him, trying to get to the door, trying to get out. She's a loose cannon. She's all over the place, you know, just tunnel vision and she wants to get to these police officers jocelyn like she is determined to go to jail child okay and to be honest i think this is what really got her arrested in the first place the fact that she was going out there or trying to get outside the door and then they she punched ballistic and the police saw that now yes they were called there for the big lex fight but i think what happened was the police were you know, going around, getting statements from people. They were investigating. They were trying to figure out, okay, what happened and who needs to be arrested if anybody needs to be arrested, which is why I think Ballistic was trying to, you know, keep it on the low. Maybe he could get away with, you know, they could leave without her getting arrested. But they saw Ballistic get punched by Jocelyn. That's when she got arrested. Um, because I don't think, they were even paying her any mind at first. Yes, she might have got arrested in the long run, but at first, she brought it up on herself. I mean, Ballistic is a battered wife. I've said that before. He's a battered wife at this point, and this goes to show you that domestic violence goes both ways, and it's so much more common than we think, right? This happens, your next-door neighbor is probably dealing with it. I've dealt with domestic violence in, in my life. My mom dealt with domestic violence. My brother and his girlfriend, they were, you know, had a domestic violent relationship at one point. It's very, very, very common. And I always see Jocelyn putting her hands on ballistic. I don't, I've never really seen him put his hands on her. And he may have. He may have. They may have a toxic relationship where they beat on each other when they get high as kites. Allegedly. Okay. When they allegedly get high as kites, they probably be, you know, whoop on each other. And, and you know, 
If we saw this, how many more times has this happened? This can't be the first. You know they be swinging on each other, left and right. Now, back at the house, the other girls that didn't go to Miami, they're having a naked lesbian slumber party. All the girls are either naked or they're in lingerie and they've got their snacks and they're all just mingling and, you know, and any, any reason for Precious to strip down naked, she gonna strip down naked, child. I've seen that girl naked more times this season than I've seen her clothed. Hey, I'm all here for it. You want to show titties and ass? I'll look. Okay. Now, Egypt is trying to flirt with Daisy. But Daisy ain't feeling it. Because Daisy's like, you just put a gash in my head, but now you flirt it with me. And she says, I don't know if this girl want to fight me or eat my pussy. And that's what it's giving me, too. I like Egypt, but it's like, girl, can I get a, I'm sorry, can we talk this situation out as to why you put a gash in my motherfucking head? And all of a sudden, you want to put your head between my legs? No, mama, it don't work like that. It don't work like that. And Daisy gives me the vibe. Daisy gives me the vibes that she doesn't like women. Yes, yeah, she might get drunk, let a girl lick her twat a little bit. But I don't know. I get the vibes that she's strictly dickly. Maybe she's a fly-by-night lesbian. I don't know. What do y'all think? Y'all think da Daisy would give her Daisy to Egypt? Y'all think she'd give the Daisy up? Or do y'all think Daisy is strictly dickly? And I just don't know if she's studying Egypt. I don't think she's studying Egypt like that. Now, the rest of the girls, I can see, you know, let's be honest here. I can see the 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 les lesbianism, lesbianism in all of them, but I don't really see it in Daisy. But it's not because she's a girly girl, girly girl, Kim Kardashian-esque, because there's lipstick lesbians. There are girly, girly lesbians. They're just, they're out there. Um, it's just, I don't know. Just, I've just never got that vibe with, with, with Daisy. Now, we see Egypt, you know, her and Daisy start going back and forth because Daisy's like, you know, publicly like, uh-uh. I'm not studying you, Miss Mamas. Even after Egypt pulls out money, she pulls out a wad of ones. Daisy's like, I don't want to see your ones. She pulls out a wad of hundreds. Daisy's like, you still ain't got enough to eat this pussy. And at this point, Egypt, she ain't feeling it. You know, she 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 ain't feeling it. She's pissed. They kind of going back and forth to the point where Egypt gets a little crunk. She a little pissed. She want to get off the couch. And Wet Wet sits on Egypt, and she's like, no, I don't want you to go nowhere. And Egypt, that is one stout woman, because Egypt throws Wet Wet's little ass right over. And she says, don't fucking touch me, bro. I'm serious, bro. Don't fucking touch me. I don't like when people do that, bro. And I mean, I don't blame her. You know, when, 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 when we mad, don't, don't hold me back. Don't sit on me. Don't touch me. Right? So I could kind of sympathize with Egypt in that moment. So Wet Wet takes Egypt upstairs. You know, at this point, Wet Wet's drunk. Egypt's, you know, she's a little drunk. And Wet Wet tells her, look, I'm proud of you. You didn't hit her. You didn't give her stitches again. You didn't send her to the hospital again. This is growth. You didn't put your hands on this girl. You, you you did the right thing. And it's you know, it's another reason why I like Wet Wet. She's fun. She's 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 quirky. She's cool. And this seemed like a real relatable moment. It seemed like, you know, she was trying to pull Egypt to the side and be like, look, Jocelyn's already told you, no more fighting. Talk she's trying to talk to her, calm her down, you know, bring her back to earth. And I appreciate that in Wet Wet, you know? She seems like a girl's girl. Now Egypt, on the other hand, she says she appreciates Wet Wet. She thinks it's sweet, you know, that she's being here for her. But she says that when Wet Wet drinks, she turns gay. And I kind of noticed what Egypt was talking about. You know, Wet Wet did seem a little flirty. You know, she was sitting in her lap and looking her dead in her eyes like this. And it did seem a little flirty to me. Um, 
And Egypt says, you know, she doesn't want Wet Wet to flirt with her because her breath be stanky and she be musty. And I'm just like, damn, Wet Wet. Damn, Wet Wet. I try to save you every time, Wet Wet. But these girls, they, they, they tearing you apart in these confessionals, mama. They tear you apart. This season has not been a good one for Wet Wet so far. Because first it was the weave. Then it was the teeth. Now it's her breath. Now it's she's musty. And I'm like, oh, this is not a good look. Wet Wet, if your future husband is out there, only thing he gonna know about you is that you got a bad weave, allegedly. Your breath stank. You musty. And you got bad teeth. Allegedly. Now, I don't think this about Wet Wet. I think she's a pretty girl, okay? Yes, she could use a better weave, but hey, that's not my place to tell her that. If she wants to get a better weave, get a better weave. I know I told Slim that. I did say Slim needed a better weave. I'm sorry. She did. Does Wet Wet need a better weave? Okay, yes, yeah, she might need a fucking better weave, okay? We'll say that. We will say that. We'll say that. But I just don't like it. I don't like picking on Wet Wet. She's my girl, and I feel like I have to defend her, you know? I don't know. Now, Wet Wet brings up... She's sitting in Egypt's lap, and she brings up the fact that they both have children. And they bond over the fact that they both have children. And then all of a sudden, Wet Wet starts crying. And you know when you drink, people get drunk, they get emotional, and this is happening to Wet Wet in this moment. She's drunk, she's getting emotional, and she says, I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask to have a special needs child. And I'm like, oh my God, where did this come from? Wet Wet, where did this come from? I know they... Like, the alcohol is really the truth serum for Wet Wet right now, I'm afraid. Um, and I think Wet Wet has probably just been dealing with so much at home and taking care of a special needs child. And, you know, that she's finally letting it out. Because we, I, I didn't really know this about her. I knew she had a child, but I didn't know it was a special needs child. And it's obviously something that's been difficult for her. Um... And I understand that, but it's like, oh, girl, this is not going to come off good on camera. This is not a good look on camera. Because when you say you didn't ask for this, you didn't ask for a special needs child. I don't think anybody does, sweetheart. But you don't say that. You know, y'all know what I'm saying at home. It's just some things you don't say. Can I say something, too, before we move on? For this, for this to be Jocelyn's Cabaret, New York, we don't really see a lot of New York. You know what I'm saying? And, and New York is a beautiful city that you could be showcasing. New York City is a cast member in itself. I mean, the girls live in a mansion in Jersey. This is not Jocelyn's Cabaret, Jersey. Y'all should have got them a penthouse in New York City. Zeus has got the money. They could have paid for it. Like, and also, we never say, like, like, the girls are either always in a house, in the club, or on a Sprinter van or a bus. Like, can we not see Wet Wet and T-Love have lunch or brunch in the city? Can we not see Holiday and Precious and T-Love and, 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 what's her name? Lucky going for a jog in Central Park while they talk about the drama. Why don't we got to see all the scenes in the house, on the bus, or in the club? Like, change it up, Zeus. It's not that hard. Like, y'all call me. Who, Jocelyn's Cabaret people, call me. Okay? Because I'll produce for y'all. I will, I will help you produce a good show. This is why they need me as a producer. You better rub my credits, boo. Now, come to find out, Holiday and Precious dated 10 years ago, back in 2013. And in the house, they've been kind of like trying to do this little thing together, you know, since it's convenient for them both. Um, 
and they end up kissing and we think, okay, maybe they're going to end up rekindling things, but I don't know because Holiday is kind of more into Precious than what Precious is into her and Holiday wants to kiss and cuddle and love, but Precious really doesn't want to. And her reasoning is, she says she puts Precious on a 24-hour punishment because Precious wouldn't, or Holiday would not do a sponsored post for her. Apparently, Precious wanted to give Holiday a wig and Holiday was going to post it for 24 hours and she has to keep the wig. But Holiday said no, and that pissed her off. Yeah. Something about that's just weird. It's like, why wouldn't you just talk that out? I don't know. But Precious also says that, you know, she has a girlfriend. And the girl will let her do what she wants. But Holiday, Holiday, she, Holiday just the horny ass man, okay? Because she says, I just want to get some pussy. That's all. She just needs some pussy and she going to be all right. If Precious would have just gave her some pussy, she would have shut up. She would have been quiet. Y'all did all that hooping and hollering and yelling when y'all could have just fucked it out. Precious, this is all you had to do. Throw that leg back one time. One time. And y'all would have been good. Holiday says, I'm a sucker for some, some pussy. I'm a sucker for some good pussy. Me too, Holiday. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. But honestly, we're, we're going to talk about this Holiday and Precious story, but they really spent too much time on it. We literally saw no Jocelyn this episode. We saw no Natural, no Andrea, no Danny, no, none of the girls that are in Miami. We saw none of that. It was strictly focused on Precious and holiday if i was precious and holiday i'd be really happy right now because they just got a full episode about them them and then on them and them only if i had a business precious or holiday i would be plugging the hell out of it right now because y'all were y'all got so much airtime. i thought it was precious and holidays cabaret i really did for a minute i'm like shit i mean and and we talked about this tonight on my bad east east live after show if you haven't seen that yet, go check it out. We did the after show live tonight. Um, it's posted on the channel. But we talked about tonight on there how these scenes be so long and drawn out. We don't need to see Holiday and Precious talk about their relationship from 10 years ago for 20 minutes. Hell, I'd rather watch Abby eat fucking cereal in the kitchen than, than, than have to watch that for 20 minutes. I think Holiday, it's it's pretty obvious that Holiday still has feelings for Egypt. Watching this footage, I think her coming into this house and living with Egypt kind of reopened all those wounds and those feelings and the things that they had in the past. And I think that Precious is in a different place in her life. And she looks at Holiday as like, yeah, you know, we dated and, and we can fuck around while we're here a little bit, but I ain't really studying you like that. You know what I'm saying? And I think it hurts Holiday because she's like, wait, I feel like this about you. Why don't you feel like this about me? You know? But I'm confused at the same time because it's like, Egypt, you got a man. Precious has got a woman. So what are y'all really arguing about? Y'all ain't going to be together anyway. What's the real fucking issue here? And you know... After Egypt and Holiday have their little talk in the living room and they pretty much, you know, say fuck it to each other, Egypt is like, not Egypt, Holiday and Precious, when they, after they yell and get out and they say fuck you to one another, Holiday goes and is like bawling her eyes out to Egypt. Like that's the kind of cry you have when you really love somebody and you can tell she really loved that girl. But it's like Egypt told her, you got to love her from a distance, baby. This girl don't care for you like that no more. This girl has moved on. You can't expect what you're giving her because she can't give it to you. And at this point, you're only hurting yourself. It's not her that's hurting you. 
You're hurting yourself because you're hoping and wishing for something that's never going to be. And I can relate to that. I've been in those situations. You know, you really want to be with somebody, but they're not giving you what you should be given. You got to know your worth at some point. And it takes time to get there. Sometimes it takes time. Lord knows it takes time. I've had that problem. But you got to get there and choose you. Now, Egypt says, I mean, Holiday says at this point, after Egypt said all that to her, it turned her on. And she said, at this point, I just want to stick my tongue down Egypt's throat. Because she said all of the right things. And I'm like, yes, I am here for the lesbian telenovela. Give it to me. Give me all the lesbian telenovelas. Now, now we see T-Love, Spin, Lucky, and Precious are in the hot tub naked. And T-Love brings up the fact in her confessional that she feels like Spin is a closet lesbian and hasn't came out yet. And I have to agree Spin has gave me lesbian vibes from the get-go. And watching her this episode, it sort of verified for me that I'm pretty sure she is because she's been too involved when it with with Holiday and Precious and their whole love debacle they have. She's been so vocal and involved in it. Too involved. Like, girl, why do you care so much? And at one point, Spin even says she feels like she's in a love triangle with Holiday and Precious. And it's like, okay, yeah, you know, you want to be in a love triangle with them two girls. That's what it is. I have to agree with T-Lo there. I do feel like, you know, there's some sugar in, in, in Spin's tank, if you know what I'm saying. I just, I don't know. I just get the gay vibes from her. And Lucky tells her, you, you want to see my coochie? It looks like a macaroon. <laughs> that was... My favorite saying from the night. You want to see my coochie? It looks like a macaroon. She didn't say macaroon. Is it macaroon? Is it macaroon or macaroon? Well, Lucky was saying macaroon. And all I could imagine was her coochie looking like a macaroon. You know, they like them little, they like little Oreos. Them, you know, them little macaroon, them little French pastries. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, Now, Egypt and Holiday, they are in they go in the bedroom together they shut the door and they talk and they have a one-on-one -on -one. they have a heart to heart and we learn something about egypt that actually she has in common with holiday egypt and holiday have in common that they both went to prison they both had tragic incidents happen in their life that led them to prison which i thought was very very interesting and how similar of stories that these two girls have. They both have similar stories. They're both lesbian women, bisexual women. They're both beautiful, gorgeous black women. And I just love to see it. I just love to see it. And I think I love it too because it's like the queer love of it all. The queer gay black love of it all. Um, but no. Holiday or... Egypt confides in Holiday and tells her that she was a victim of domestic violence and she was dating this man who would put his hands on her. And she says that he was a lot bigger than her. And one night he charged at her while she was holding a knife because she was scared. And she said she didn't think he would charge at her because she had the knife to protect herself. And she said he charged at her. And when he did, she held the knife up and swung and it hit one of his main arteries and it killed the man. And the fucked up part about it was, if you didn't see the episode, is she said where she was from, which is Michigan, they don't have a stand your ground law, which is a self-defense law that says if someone puts their hands on you and you kill them in self-defense, you can get, get away with it and walk. Michigan doesn't have that. So Egypt ended up doing five years in prison. She said she ended up losing her life and he ended up losing his life. Um, 
terrible. Terrible. I couldn't imagine because where I'm from, we have a stand your ground law. So where if you charge at me and I'm in fear for my life and I pull out a gun and I blow your head off, I'm going to get away with it That's out of self-defense. And it's scary to think that other states don't have that and you can go to prison for something like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just feel bad for her. You know, in a way, I feel like she did get lucky in the fact that she could have gotten a longer sentence. If they don't have a stand your ground law, that's murder, technically. Surprised she didn't get 30 years, 40 years, you know what I'm saying? Life. And she's a black woman, too. And they've been disproportionately affected when it comes to the legal and criminal justice system and being arrested and doing more time than, than others. You know what I'm saying? Um... I feel for Egypt. It's sad she had to go through that because I'm sure she didn't intend to kill kill the guy. You know what I'm saying? She's probably trying to just get him away from her. Like, let me slice your ass up and then you'll leave me alone when you bleeding. Now, Holiday, you know, after this, this whole one-on-one, -on -one, Holiday ends up kissing Egypt. And she's trying to get that get back is what she's trying to do. She's trying to make Precious jealous. But I think she's turned on by Egypt, too. I mean, hell, I would be too. Egypt was saying all the right things, you know? She was she was listening to Holiday. She was giving her great advice. She was saying the things I would want to hear from someone that I was attracted to. Now, next week, we see Jocelyn get out of jail. And she says, can y'all believe that I actually went to jail? It's like, uh, yeah, we can believe that. Actually, what we can't believe is that you haven't already been to jail. And what we can't believe is that you ain't still there. The way you be putting your hands on people, Jocelyn. Yeah, we can believe you went to jail. So I'm interested to see how that plays out. We're going to see her get out of jail and her and Joc and her and Ballistic reunite. We're also going to see how the girls react when they see Jocelyn when she flies back from Miami to New York. You know, they reunite with each other after this whole arrest that went public and it was all over social media. And we talked about it here. Um, and also, I told y'all that, that next week things are going to pick up. It's going to get more interesting because this episode was a little boring. It was a filler episode. But next week does definitely heat up because we see Miss Natural and Danny end up going at it. And I'm actually proud of Danny because she stands up to Natural when it seems like this entire time she's cowered down to her. But next week we see that Natural is still hating on Danny, hating on the fact that Danny is the better dancer, that Danny got the presidential suite, the fact that Jocelyn has been praising Danny. And I think that, you know, Miss Natural wants to be that bottom bitch. She wants to be the head dancer. She wants to be the main one and you're just not natural you're not and you're coming off like a very toxic mean evil bitter biatch but we'll break that all down next week all that and more on the jocelyn's cabaret new york after show only on damien after dark you don't want to miss it but before that make sure you subscribe to the channel click that subscribe button right below this video and turn on your post notifications so you never miss a beat or when i go live also, click the thumbs up button below this video to like the video. That way, it puts us in the algorithm and more people like yourself can find us. Now, if you want to support the channel even further, you can donate by clicking in the description box below this video. There'll be ways that you can donate using Cash App, PayPal, Venmo, and Zelle. I'll also post my Amazon wish list for those that are feeling generous. Also, join the conversation. I would love to hear from you guys on what you thought of this episode. How did you feel about this episode? And what would you rate it? What do you guys think about the whole Jocelyn situation and her punching the cops and punching ballistic? And what do you think about this whole holiday story? Holiday and Precious and the whole love squirrel they're having. The whole love debacle. I want to hear what you guys think about that. And also let me know what you guys think about um Egypt and her story and how she killed someone in self-defense and ended up going to prison and are any of you from Michigan let me know about Michigan and their laws y'all don't have a stand your ground law what anyways I love you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time on Damien After Dark see ya
Yeah.